Our mission over the next few videos is to demonstrate why certain individuals that are currently attempting to claim ancient ruins we so often share on our channel where the work of academia's claimed constructors are not only vastly incorrect, but that they are also being selectively ignorant. We intend to demonstrate the reasons why this explanation as to their origins is a virtual impossibility, and also prove the level of advanced knowledge needed to construct them evades even our modern civilization. Roman and Greek civilizations undoubtedly contributed tremendous amounts to modern life be it their technologies or building techniques. Architectural designs and ideas incorporated into structures that have survived millennia. However, there are many anomalous aspects of their academically claimed ruins that not only demonstrate unbelievable skill and precision, but are so advanced as to evade our own current understanding. One of these defining characteristics is undoubtedly polygonal masonry. Randomly shaped or possibly cast stones, with some for example found within Sacsayhuaman, reaching far into hundreds of tons, masterfully fitted together, constructed into walls and fortresses, with no utilization of mortars. These often enormous megalithic blocks somehow placed together so perfectly that not only have they survived countless millennia, but are also earthquake-proof. These stone walls are a demonstration of what can be achieved if one had an astonishing intellect, and indeed, stone-building capabilities. These walls simply evade modern human explanation. No modern, or indeed any of the well-studied ancient civilizations, have ever demonstrated anything even near to the levels of refinement exhibited within these ancient walls, found all over the globe yet ignored by academics the world over. How can certain individuals claim that academia's tale of events be accurate, yet seemingly overlook such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? How can one be expected to believe that the cultures currently claimed as having been responsible for such constructions, did indeed complete such tasks, when they are, in reality, too advanced an undertaking even for our own modern civilization. As such, continuing to evade explanation. We feel that many of these individuals are merely towing a line rather than attempting to unravel that which they perceive as enigmatic and considerably controversial to their current supposed viewpoint. We feel there is no excuse for a diligent researcher to overlook these achievements when investigating such sites, or indeed attempting to unravel the secrets of our past. We also feel that if one attempts to explain away such sites, or merely overlook such features in favor of academic explanation, it is an indication of conspiratorial motives rather than that of an honest purveyor of discoveries. There are many unexplained features of the ancient world many of which we intend to share over the coming videos, and if one merely wishes to convey an illusion of all-knowing, they are soon to become unstuck, just like the academia they so mindlessly follow and we so vehemently disagree with. Due to these deliberate twisting of the facts, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. During our research, we have discovered a number of methods to prove that there have indeed been lost civilizations here upon our planet along with their once high technologies. One of the most peculiar being polygonal masonry, which although claimed by some as geopolymer blocks, are made of all sorts of naturally found and subsequently quarried strata. However, what is interesting about this magnificent technique is the visual evidence of more primitive attempts made later, and also its selective use as casing stones, covering sections of far more ancient structures seemingly used in an attempt to conserve said sites from further erosion. One side of particular interest is that of Emilia, found within modern-day Italy, which, after part of the ancient wall collapsed, has been scanned in depth. Non-invasive techniques such as ground-penetrating radar, electrical-resistative tomography, 
specifically adapted for this study, laser scanning and digital terrestrial photogrammetry, integrated with other geomatic measures, were utilized and provided by total station and global navigation satellite systems. The results came as a surprise to those investigating the inner stability of the wall, finding three separate periods of activity. In other words, at least three now lost civilizations had been building the wall prior to the arrival of what is now commonly referred to as the Cyclopean period. According to the official study, quote, we defined a max wall thickness of about 3.5 meters for the cyclopic sector. We show details of the internal block organization, and we detected low resistivity values, interpretable with high water content behind the basal part of the walls. Could this be residual evidence of a great flood? They continued. Then, quantitative analysis to assess reliable geotechnical stability was done. The results give rise, for the first time, to internal imaging of these ancient walls, highlighting features associable to different building styles related to different historical periods." End quote. Who were these ancient civilizations? Where did they go? Polygonal techniques are now a lost technology, a smoking gun argument in opposition of modern paradigm one of a supposed unbroken timeline of continual evolution into our own modern civilization. The study, we feel, has not only proven our own hypothesis regarding multiple lost civilizations, but could also give credence to the theory of the Great Flood. It is a wall, and indeed research discovery, which we find highly compelling. Tokyo's Imperial Palace home of the Japanese emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building, and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations, including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered, a highly compelling building technique which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction. Present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Osaka Castle, one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16th centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. 
the main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia. These sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques, a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another with incredible precision, stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, there not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. Perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Chulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization, responsible for all the other as yet unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force, with the slight variations present from location to location only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking? Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world, spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly? Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? 
regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination. We feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such is undoubtedly highly compelling. Many of the words which we use in the modern day are derived from far more ancient sources than most would imagine. Many of the words that we use for objects and activities, which have been around since time immemorial, have their named origins placed near the birth of some of the earliest civilizations to have ever walked upon our planet. As such, if beings such as giants did once exist on Earth, one would not only expect to find enormous unexplained ruins, but also these lexical inspirations given to the activities undertaken by these huge people. Is it then just a mere coincidence that ancient enormous stone walls are often named Cyclopean? Cyclops, having once been an ancient one-eyed giant within ancient Greek and Roman mythology. Is it also but a mere coincidence that the giant found within biblical stories named Goliath was also a one-eyed beast? Was the name given to these enormous ruins a clue to their original builders? A clue left upon spoken language, a remnant far more difficult to erase from history than any physical remains. Found everywhere on Earth, and even dotting some of the most remote tropical islands, these Cyclopean ruins still perplex us to this day. Many of the ancient Cyclopean ruins that can be found within developed areas have often been draped with modern architecture. Many suspect that this is often done in an attempt to conceal the true nature of these sites. Italy is a particularly good example of a country drenched in Cyclopean architecture, yet chooses to overlook such wonders in favor of modern development. Scattered throughout ancient Latinium, and yet again, coincidentally, placed at the location of a later flourishing civilization, and actually the first real modern world superpower, Rome, are ruins undoubtedly left by an as yet not publicly disclosed or studied branch of ancient beings who were capable of feats we are yet to unravel. Many classical writers and historians, including Homer, Hesiod, Plutarch, Thuclides, and Diodorus Siculus, among others, posited the idea that the Cyclopean ruins of Italy and others within Europe were erected by this now extinct Cyclopean race. And we seemingly continue to carry this torch. For, to heavily research, not only these particular areas of ancient architecture, but the many individuals who have made remarkable discoveries over the years, along with reels of newspaper archives with an interest in these particular finds, and also the suspected individuals tasked with the possible concealment of such. The proposition of an unknown ancient race of controversial beings, possibly much larger than modern humans, having once existed on our planet, has become overwhelming. Why are ancient ruins, seemingly built by a race of giants, actually named after giants? A name with origins placed far within our distant past. Did an ancient race of giants once build the countless unexplained ruins found on virtually every continent? We find the evidence within some areas to suggest such overwhelming. The Necromantion Once used as a Greek temple of necromancy, devoted by the Greeks to their god of the underworld Hades and his female consort Persephone. This site was believed by the Greek devotees to be the door of Hades, allowing entry to the realm of the dead. Located at the meeting point of the Acheron, Pyriphlegethon, and Cocytus rivers, which were believed to have also flowed through the kingdom of Hades. With names given to the rivers, presumably by the Greeks, interpreted to be joyless, burning coals, and lament. Whilst other temples, such as the Temple of Poseidon at Tanera, the temples at Hermione and Cumae in Italy, and Heraclea within Pontos, were known to have been used for the practice of necromancy. 
it was the Necromantion that was the most famous of them all. According to ancient Greek beliefs, while the bodies of the dead decayed in the earth, their souls would be released, traveling to this purported underworld via fissures within the earth. These spirits of the dead, according to the ancient Greeks, were said to possess abilities that the living did not have, including the power of precognition, the power to foretell the future. They therefore claim that these temples were erected by them in locations that were entrances to this mysterious underworld, used as altars for the believers of such to practice necromancy, a belief form of communication with the dead. This practice was attempted in order to receive prophecy. However, if one explores the architecture of such site, not only does this ancient Greek claim of construction become a clear, dubiously attested claim, but the evidence for highly advanced precision block building, now known as polygonal masonry, is discovered throughout the site. This existence of such sophisticated block building, which is not only found within and upon nearly every as yet unexplained ancient site upon the Earth, but is incredibly similar in form to that of many other ancient sites within Italy, specifically the ancient wall which can still be found surrounding the Acropolis of Alatre and at other sites, including within the ancient ruins of Delphi. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering is as yet unexplained by modern academics, strongly indicating that this ancient site was originally built by a civilization now lost to history. Furthermore, like the enigmatic metal clamps, whose remnants are to be found within a number of these same ancient sites that were originally used by this highly intelligent group, these once utilized to keep the stones in their fitted positions as they shifted and settled over the millennia. These clamps' design vary from continent to continent. Our reason for mentioning this curiosity is that although the sophisticated methods of creating these ruins often remain similar or the same, depending upon the continent they are found, is dependent on the style and material these methods are made from. This, to us, strongly suggests that these ancient structures may have indeed been built by the different races, found within these differing countries. The commanding force, the leading power of these groups, was the same worldwide power and font of this knowledge, who, with their clearly incredible technological prowess, successfully created such structures, and indeed the Necromantion, which, regardless of their tremendous age, has successfully survived a vast amount of millennia, successfully making it into our own modern ancestors' lives, predictably adapted due to their wondrous nature, into their historical belief systems, often being adopted surrounding spirituality, either for a theistic worship, burial, or in the case of the Necromantion, for the use of contacting the dead through the mystic teachings of necromancy. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Recently we posted a photograph of a rather perplexing megalithic ruin, now known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba or Nusta Hispana, shared within a community post on the channel's main page. The image predictably caused a lot of bafflement within our community, thusly we took it upon ourselves to dig a little deeper into what the true purpose of this monument could have once been. What we found not only answered this question, but has seemingly unraveled the original purpose of countless stone anomalies, and possibly answered one of the most critical issues of all. How were these megalithic walls of seemingly impossible, randomly cut polygonal masonry once constructed? There are countless finished sites of not only polygonal stonework, but simple yet incredible stable brick course blocks, some far exceeding 1,000 tons. Thus, it is not absurd to presume, like the trilithon, they were still cut, quarried, moved and lifted into place, somehow with incredible precision. How these blocks interlink was another mystery which we feel Nusta Hispana and now many other sites and their enigmatic abandoned blocks, 
often seemingly being mistaken for chairs, are the answer for how these polygonal walls were built, a secret hidden in plain sight for all these years, with Nusta Hispana of Vilcambaba strangely seemingly unlocking this secret for us. All around the megalith lay finished stones ready for transportation, while the odd patterning still found upon the original bedrock are interlocking joints, which we have seen in a number of other locations and near polygonal areas themselves. Yet the Nusta Hispana megaliths cuts along with that of the now broken Naupa Iglesia found near Olente Tambo share the same unfinished carvings and once enigmatic protuberances seemingly abandoned suddenly, just like that of Nusta Hispana. Yet, thankfully, the carving patterns are indicative of so many other ruins we have found on location. It is seemingly unraveling the mystery and answering the question of what these mysterious cuts were for and what resulted from them. These seemingly random-shaped blocks were anything but. They were cut from their bedrock quarries, not only with incredible accuracy, but with unbelievable future insight, always taking into consideration the interlocking mechanism of every block that would later become the seemingly unbroken, impenetrable form of the world's polygonal constructions. Like that of the stone of the pregnant woman found within Baalbek, claimed as abandoned, firstly as it weighed over 1,000 tons and due to a slight incline, yet mere meters away the trilithon, which lay aloft with blocks placed atop others, each weighing thousands of tons. When excavated, the stone of the pregnant woman is just another gargantuan structural ruin. Blocks mistaken by tourists and natives alike for millennia as mere chairs were anything but. They were precision-made stones, walls designed to last the eons, possibly to leave a message to following generations, or possibly it is just a demonstration of these lost civilizations' past capabilities when it came to an advanced stone age. It is an ongoing mystery and answers to questions we have searched for years, which we find the most accurately fitting to date and thus highly compelling. There is a literal smorgasbord of smoking gun ancient architectural anomalies which dot the Peruvian hillsides literally thousands of miles of ruins. With ancient trails stretching far into South America and much farther afield, the largest known ancient artifact ever found is, in fact, a trail just like this. Yet the structures they built still stand as a testament to their creator's abilities, which were indicative of an ancient civilization with abilities and knowledge that mainstream academia seems hellbent in its reluctance to even consider the possibility of their existence. It refuses to even discuss the topic, regardless of the fact that these buildings were made by people who were members of advanced ancient civilizations that somehow became lost within history possibly during a near-extinction-level event. Yet I digress. Our reason for the digression is an intriguing, if limited, post we came across recently, discussing one of the most remarkable, if little-mentioned additions to the most miraculous factors of the ancient Peruvian architecture, most notably its polygonal masonry, which has allowed it to be earthquake-proof for untold ages. Its keying stones, featured in the article, allowing these ruins to just brush off earthquakes, such as the 7.7 on the Richter scale quake that hit Peru in 1950. As mentioned, it was a curious article, and the reason for our fascination and surprise in its existence was the institution responsible for its printing. It would seem in a brazen move just casually covered advanced technology, i.e. keying stones, the institution in question was Cambridge University. Coined as mechanical keying, the article does indeed begin with explaining the stone's miraculous placement and thus their ability to brush off natural disasters, yet predictably just drifts off into another subject without ever attempting to answer the obvious. 
That being, if these locations were built by the civilizations in which academia, and we should say especially Cambridge agrees, were a primitive people with a primitive knowledge of stone architecture and primitive tools, how did they not only create these keying stones, but the seemingly perfectly cut stones which make up the famous polygonal stonework of ancient Peru? Not to mention the multi-layered megalithic fortress of Sacsayhuaman, clearly created by those who built Machu Picchu. But the enormity of the stones they used, and the possible reason for this, seems too deliberate for it to not have been indicative of some warning. Yet regardless, of each side in particular, their keying stones are a remarkable legacy of a lost civilization, one which we find incredibly compelling. Many of the sites we often select to cover can oftentimes be barely surviving relics from lost antiquities. However, we find ourselves in a fortunate age, where not only do we have the technology to study vast volumes of literature, all at the tap of a finger, but also enables those with similar interests, and possibly knowledge of a ruin unheard somewhere, to discuss such. And so far, it seems the ongoing debate has found a healthy home here on YouTube. Indeed, with a number of dot-com websites becoming more and more popular, this being an inevitable result of the exposure of the many relics we share, proving a vast amount of people share a similar opinion, and like you and I, are seemingly not blind to the obvious, rather than blindly following the opinion fed to them by authority. However, the fact that the many as-mentioned ruins, no matter how robust, made from any known material, will all eventually return to nature, either through erosion or entropy, it is inevitable. We are in an age where not only do we possess such capabilities, but there are fortunately countless ruins once made of enormous, notoriously weather-resistant tough granite. Baffling and unexplainable stones we simply cannot decode how they were used. And we feel this is perhaps the exact reason they were used in said ruins. Perhaps it was a statement to say, we were here, and we were advanced. The polygonal roadway on Cypress Hill, for example, the main subject of this video, is one such example of a ruin that, due to its apparent construction in courses, is clearly a close match to that of polygonal masonry now catalogued all over the world. The opportunity to dismiss as geological, we feel, is becoming a stronger argument by the day. Cypress Hill's polygonal roadway reveals there are many incredible areas which are not as robust as others, far more susceptible to erosion. However, in the channel's opinion, archaeological excavation should be undertaken. It will prove, or disprove, the discovery of the formation's true origins, either artificial or an uncanny natural formation. Mystery history strongly suspects it is indeed an exposed section of a much larger still buried road, which has laid preserved under the soil just waiting to be exposed. Who built the roadway on Cypress Hills? Do you feel confident in declaring it of artificial origins? Or do you perceive it as a geological formation? Feel free to let us know your opinion in the comments. I think adding personal opinions below will be an interesting exercise for all to see in regard to public opinion of the formation. Hopefully, one day localized digs will expose the reality once and for all regarding the road. Undoubtedly, a most curious uncanny of rock formations, one which we find highly compelling. There are many aspects of ancient ruins which can indicate a far more advanced, technologically capable constructor than are currently academically attested. Massive, seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks precisely placed within their constructions. Advanced weight-bearing architecture that could have only been understood by a civilization with a far more knowledgeable set of building strategies than those claimed as the culprit, our own well-studied, more recent ancestors. Precision tool marks that could have only been left by high-rotating precision machinery, 
etched and worked into notoriously hard stone, stones such as granite, that thanks to its erosion resistance, still possess these clear evidential scars, left by these enigmatic machines, leaving us to ponder and academia to ignore. Mysterious alignments, often created using enormous stones, that, according to the history books, were placed by groups of ancestors who simply couldn't have known these precise precision alignments, let alone worship them with such megalith stonework. Metal clamps, used the world over to latch these enormous blocks together, used by a mysterious civilization, who were somehow aware of the fact that these stones would shift as the years went on. With many of these clamps cast into place, this hypothesis, supported by the evidence of vitrification upon the surface of the stonework, strong evidence of a civilization that had mastered the control of immense heats, reminiscent of modern-day refineries, with the rare example of a massive upart, like the giant glass Bess Shearim slab, further supporting this past mastery of extreme temperature refinement. Yet, the most notable and most numerous proof of this past lost civilization, and indeed their forgotten technology, is polygonal masonry. With some of this stonework clearly of such a great antiquity that it is slowly losing its recognizable form. One of these forgotten sites is Ori Castle, found deep within the forests of Japan. Located on Shiroyama Mountain, it was named after its supposed builder, Mitsutada Ori, who was the leader of a clan also named after him, the Ori clan. Ori and his clan originally stemmed from the Toki clan, but once expelled from their land and left to wander, Mitsutada recovered their land in 1536 and supposedly built a new castle on the mountain. However, due to the as yet unexplained polygonal masonry, and also its clearly incredible age, we tend to believe that Mitsutada merely rediscovered this fortress within the forests on the mountains and used them to regain a foothold within the area, thus naming the castle after his efforts. The true age of the castle, we feel, is unknown, although we strongly suspect that it predates many of the other anomalous polygonal masonry that can be found within Japan such as the foundations of Osaka Castle, an astonishing group of features we have covered previously. However, due to the sheer age of the ruin of Ori Castle, the stonework has eroded to such a degree that it takes a keen eye and a few years of practice to be able to identify it as having once been the same level of precise polygonal masonry as that found elsewhere within Japan. Who built Ori Castle? Was it really abandoned mid-build as academia claims? Or was it, like we postulate, simply left to ruin, a relic of a now-forgotten civilization, left to simply erode away, eventually to a point where geology will argue it away as a mere natural formation? We find Ori Castle, and indeed the many other enigmatic sites to be found within Japan, quietly kept away from curious minds throughout the world as undoubtedly highly compelling.